I'm just going to get the mood going in here. So this is me. I'm Lucy. I am currently a video producer and a lifestyle host and a stop motion artist. I work at Refinery29 at the moment. And has anyone in the house seen any of my videos? Yay! That's so exciting. OK, great. So I'm going to have to explain what I do for everyone else that hasn't seen it yet. But the crux of my story and what I'm here to talk about today is trying. Because I really want to make trying the new doing. I think a lot of people are really afraid to do things and to take risks and do something. Because of course, if you say, I'm going to do it, the connotation is either you're going to succeed or you're going to fail. Nobody wants to fail. But I say, let's change that language and let's turn this all into, I'm going to try it. Because when you say, I'm going to try something, of course, you still might succeed and you might fail. But in the case of trying, if you fail, that's still a positive outcome because you still tried it. And there's really nothing to lose when you try. And I am here today because I essentially built my entire current career off of trying and not being afraid to try. So before I get into it, I think this whole story has to go back to my first job just out of college in 2014 when I started working at an advertising agency as an associate producer. And I really wanted to do creative things, but my job wasn't allowing for it at the moment. So thankfully, I was working at a company that was all about fostering being makers and being creators. They said, just pick up a pen and write something. Just pick up a paintbrush and paint something. Just grab a camera and shoot something. And I know that's easier said than done, but I was you know, the lowest position on the totem pole, totally entry level. And I said, OK, I'm going to do that. I picked up a camera. I lugged up this giant tripod. And I grabbed a little marshmallow that was sitting at my desk. And I walked into a conference room that was available. And nine hours later, I emerged with a 30-second stop motion video of this marshmallow. I had no idea how to make stop motion videos. I didn't really even know what stop motion was, except for Gumby and maybe Wallace and Gromit, but didn't know how it was put together. Seriously, just had no idea what I was doing. But I wanted to try. So grabbed this equipment, went into the conference room, there you go, I had a 30 second video that I was really proud of. So I ran home and I posted it on Facebook. And the next day I come into work and all my coworkers are asking me if I can start making these stop motion videos for our brands. And I'm like, I mean, I don't really know what I did. I just Googled like how to put a stop motion video together. You know, I took a whole bunch of raw JPEGs and I Googled how to convert raw files to JPEGs and then how to drag batch JPEGs into iMovie and then how to export it. And I tried, and I came out with this awesome video. And my coworkers asked me to do it. I said, sure, that is awesome. And I actually wound up going home every single day for about three months, grabbing whatever props I could find on the way, sometimes a donut, sometimes a piece of bread. And I would go to my apartment and take my iPhone, because I didn't own these expensive cameras that my company had access to. And I would tape my iPhone upside down on a chair and set up some desk lights and shoot a stop motion video on my iPhone. And I would put them, pumping them out on my Instagram like it was my job, which it wasn't. Just dumping and pumping, stop motion after stop motion, until eventually brands started asking me through email, can you make a stop motion video for our company? And that is a whole other story of how interesting it is when a brand starts asking you how much you charge for something that you're just doing for fun. So we'll get to that's another, another TED talk. But uh, in case someone's sitting here and just asking, you know, what is stop motion? What is she talking about? I have a sample video that I was commissioned by Parma Prosciutto to make. Basically, you know, I, this is one that I was commissioned to make, and I've had so much fun doing this. I was like, all of a sudden, n not to be cheesy, like with the mozzarella cheese, but like <laughs> the, ch the mozzarella and the melon balls and the prosciutto and the basil, it was a perfect metaphor for all my different skills and interests being skewered together. 
to be able to do something that I loved. And that was when I realized that this job at the ad agency wasn't for me. I really wanted a job where I was able to do more things and try more things and be more hands-on. So that was when I went to interview at Refinery29. And when I went into that interview, sort of like the skewer metaphor, I just blurted out a whole bunch of things that I wanted to do. I didn't go in there and say, I'm an expert at XYZ. I just said, I want to do a multitude of things. I was a creative writing major at Johns Hopkins University, so I can write. I hosted an entire video show at school and was on the Today Show a number of times, so I can be on camera. I love stop motion, and I just started doing them for brands. And I mean, what else can I do? I can produce, I can edit. I was just like, these are things that I would never say I'm the best at in the world, but I can do them, and I want to try to do everything. And my boss now, my current boss, who is the chief content officer at Refinery29, Amy Emmerich, she will tell you today that the reason she hired me in that interview is because I didn't come in there and say that I was an expert with a capital E at one thing, but rather because I came in there and I said, I want to try to do multiple things. And really, in the digital media world these days, you have to be able, willing and able to try to do multiple things because there's just not enough money. It's very scrappy. It's very fast. Videos are being shot on iPhones for $50 a pop. So like, you just have to be able to do all those things. And that leads me to where I am today at Refinery29. Try Living with Lucy is my current biggest franchise at Refinery. It's one of our YouTube shows. And I do host a slew of other videos for Refinery, but this is really the first one I did, and it's probably the most exciting and, and my personal favorite one. And essentially what I've done here is I've taken my love of trying and that spirit that I brought into that room that day when I made that stop motion, and I've turned trying into a lifestyle. So the way the series works is that I challenge myself to change my life for five days by trying something and my audience gives me these suggestions of what I should try next. So the photo on the left, that is me when I was trying five days of taking classes, and it's very relevant with Julie's presentation. That was me trying to knit, which I can't do. Uh, next one was five days of waking up at 5 a.m., five days of exercising every day, five days on a juice cleanse, which I failed miserably. <laughs> and I just want everyone in here really quickly Think in your head, if you were going to do five days of something, what would you do? And if anyone has an idea, just call it out. <laughs> That's a great idea, whoever said that. What else? Five days of what? No cell phone. I did that. It's very hard to walk around New York City without your map, as I've learned. What else? Yoga. Yoga. I did five days of yoga, all different types. So the reason I'm asking you guys to shout this out, and part of the reason why I've done a couple of the ones you've said already, we have had about 75 episodes of the series already, so I've done all the basics. If you're thinking about it, I've probably done it. But the reason I'm asking you to do that is because this is how the series works. I get my audience to send in ideas, and then I actually put the audience's suggestions into action, and I try it for them. And the series has been able to build this really interesting community online of people who are watching my work and then deciding to try things on their own. And one example, just to kind of show you, because the series started out on YouTube where Refinery has close to a million subscribers, but of course I've been able to pull the audience off platform to a whole bunch of other different places. So my personal Instagram channel just hit 100,000 and I've got a ton of people looking at my Snapchats and I use all of these different channels to reach out to people and ask my followers what they want to see me try. And so a perfect example is this next photo, very relevant with Halloween coming up. Uh, this is a post from my Instagram when I just recently did five days of Halloween makeup looks. And pop art was one of my costumes. And as you can see, I, you, you actually can't see, so I'll just tell you the caption of this was, what else do you want me to try? And you can probably see the comments here. There's people suggesting a skull, a unicorn, a cat. And if you go to the next slide, there's my skull, unicorn, and cat. So really, I am completely asking the audience to be part of this series with me. And this is just you know, the most basic example of taking a, an idea for a, a makeup look. But really, it's lifestyle challenges. What do you want to see? 
And I think the best thing about this series for me has been this whole time, I kind of thought that I was the one teaching my audience about a new topic because I'm doing all this research and then I'm making a video and they're sitting at home watching it. But it turns out my audience is actually the ones teaching me. And this kind of just happened recently. I got a request for five days of Huga. Does anyone know what Huga is? So I don't either. <laughs> But I looked it up, and it's a Scandinavian lifestyle that's essentially like all about being consciously cozy. So if you like hot chocolate or candles or cake, you'll probably like Huga. But keep an eye out for that episode in December because somebody suggested that to me, and now I'm obsessed with Huga. So the audience is really the ones that are teaching me here, and I think I continue to be inspired by my audience because every single time I post a video, I find that they're able to see themselves reflected back in my work, and then they actually try challenges of their own. So this last slide here just shows, oop, not good at a clicker. This last slide just shows four screenshots of some random people's Instagrams where they have tried to live like Lucy. And you see the top left, that person tried waking up at 7 a.m., not quite as early as I did. This one is five days of journaling. The person in the top right is actually making an entire list of a bunch of different five-day episodes that they want to try. And this bottom post is in Russian, but I'm ex assuming it's positive because <laughs> <laughs> it says hashtag inspiration at the end. So that's what I'm going with, it's positive. But you never know, sometimes I do have to Google translate these things. Um, and yeah, I, I think that if I want you guys to take anything away from this talk today, it's really that it's time to try. It's time. And you know, we probably are all sitting here thinking in our heads of two, three, ten things that we've had on our list that we want to try. Starting that blog, you know, finally trying that restaurant. However big or small it is, we probably have it. And the hardest step is actually just taking that first leap into the unknown and starting it and trying it. For me, it was that journey into the room with the giant tripod and the camera and the marshmallow, not knowing what was going to come out. I could have sat in that room for nine hours and just eaten the marshmallow and never even made a video. And that would have been fine. I would have tried. And so my challenge to you right now is to go home and try. Because even if you don't know where you're going when you walk through that door with all that heavy equipment, you never, ever know where the journey is going to lead you. Thank you.